In this video, we'll talk briefly about what you need to know for the bacteria Actinomyces israelii. Now, this is a gram-positive anaerobic branching filamentous rod. And I didn't include it on the slide, but I'll also note that it is not acid fast. When it comes to Actinomyces, the thing that you need to know is that this pathogen produces yellow sulfur granules, and the infection typically involves the oral cavity, the face, and the neck, but it also can be involved in the GI system and the reproductive tract. Here's a brief picture, and I hope you can appreciate the branching filaments of this bacteria. Now, I'll note that both Actinomyces israeli as well as nocardia have branching filaments, so it will be the clinical manifestations as well as some subtle differences that differentiate these two. But Actinomyces israelii is one of the bacteria that have branching filaments. Now, when it comes to pathophysiology, the good thing is that this has no virulence factor. So to that point, there's not a whole lot that you need to know here. But in terms of making sense of this in your brain, and understanding how this bacteria works beyond just what you need to memorize for your boards, please understand that Actinomyces is part of the normal flora of the oral cavity, the GI tract, and the female urogenital tract. And so then the question becomes, if it has no virulence factors, how does it cause infection? Well, it only causes infection when there is tissue injury or a break in the mucosal barrier. So think about this, if Actinomyces inhabits the oral cavity, the GI tract, and the female urogenital tract, then a tissue injury or some type of risk factor to one of those mucosal barriers causes a localized infection in that area. And then beyond that localized infection, what you need to know is that this pathogen, Actinomyces, does not respect tissue planes and it spreads contiguously. And this is why Actinomyces is associated with draining sinus tracts. If you see that word plus or minus in association, association with something like yellow sulfur granules or sinus draining tracts, these are all used relatedly and interchangeably. This is because Actinomyces does not respect tissue planes, so it will just drain out, and it's a very suppurative inflammatory process with draining sinus tracts, pus, yellow color, etc. So bottom line here, what I want you to take away, are there virulence factors in actinomyces? No, there are not. But because this is a normal flora of different mucosal barriers, if those mucosal barriers are injured, then this causes inflammation and that inflammation tends to be with draining sinus tracts, a yellow pus color or yellow sulfur granules. That's the bottom line. That yellow pus aspect is the most high yield. Now, clinically, this is really what you need to know, and this is what will separate Actinomyces israelii from similar bacteria such as Nocardia. So, as the name implies, this leads to actinomycosis. Actinomycosis on your exam is very likely to be cervicofacial actinomycosis, and more on that in just a second. As I said, this tends to be a superative infection, but this is also granulomatous, and it causes these inflammatory nodules, that tend to be draining. So they cause purulent draining fistulae that contain yellow sulfur granules and sinus draining tracts. Again, if you're like, dude, you've said that three times already, yeah, that's because it's high yield and that's what you need to know. So yellow sulfur granules, sinus draining tracts, purulent, superative, all of those gooey words and yellow words, very, very important. Now, as I said, actinomycosis can be cervicofacial, thoracic, abdominal, or pelvic. If I had to make a bet on your exam, it's very likely that they go after cervicofacial actinomycosis because that is the classic manifestation. Now, in that case, in cervicofacial actinomycosis, you tend to get swelling around the jaw. So this is going to be in the maxillary and mandibular region. And usually the patient will have a history of some type of oral procedure or dental caries or periodontitis. Now, Again, the reason that this is happening is because the mucosal barrier in that area is breached, and then the actinomyces can cause a localized swelling or inflammation in the jaw. 
Now, this isn't just going to be cervicofacial. Like I said, you can get thoracic, abdominal, and pelvic manifestations. Thoracic and abdominal tend to be lower yield on exams, but just for completeness sake, in the thoracic manifestations, you see these vague URI symptoms, right? These upper respiratory infection symptoms. This can have hemoptysis, and that hemoptysis can contain those characteristic yellow granules. But thoracic is a bit lower yield. Likewise, abdominal, lower yield, but causes nonspecific GI symptoms. And the big giveaway on your exam is a change in bowel habits. But these two, definitely not worth memorizing if you're pinched for time. Cervicofacial is the most important. And the second most important, in my view, is pelvic. Pelvic actinomycosis. So these tend to, to mimic gynecological tumors. So you might see symptoms including vaginal bleeding or discharge. And this causes pelvic inflammatory disease in women who have a history of using IUDs, intrauterine devices. Again, the thought being that when you breach the mucosal barrier that normally has actinomyces israeli as a normal flora, then it causes that localized infection, which spreads and causes sinus draining tracts, the yellow sulfur granules come out, and so on and so forth. So bottom line from this slide, know all the gooey yellow stuff, but know that on your exam, this is very likely to manifest with cervicofacial actinomycosis in somebody with recent dental caries, periodontitis, or some type of recent oral procedure, and that caused the facial abscess to form because that mucosal barrier was breached. Likewise, in women, know that this can present in sort of a pseudo-pelvic inflammatory disease in women who use intrauterine devices. But this is really all you need to know, and it should be fairly straightforward on your exam. Now, as far as treatment goes, the medication of choice is going to be penicillin G, high-dose penicillin G. But in somebody who has a penicillin allergy, you can use doxycycline, clindamycin, or erythromycin. Now, the easy mnemonic is that you need to associate actinomyces with that yellow, yellow granules, yellow drainage, pus, etc. So instead of saying actinomyces is raleigh, I say actinomyces is yellow. So it is yellow instead of it is raleigh. And that sounds really stupid, I understand, but... If this gets you free points on test day, then we'll take it. So that's everything you need to know about actinomyces israeli.